فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم The most preferred days for recitation are Fridays, Mondays and Thursdays and the best group of 10 days known as Ashr for recitation are the last 10 days So the days that are the most beloved are Jum'ah, Friday Monday and Thursday and the day of Arafah when it comes to the 10 days so in 10 slots then it's what? the last 10 days and nights of Ramadan that's the first one and the first 10 days and nights of Dhul Hijjah which is coming up right? the most preferred month for recitation is Ramadan Ra Ramadan is, a, is, is the best month for a person to read the, the Quran what's the best day to read the Quran? Friday Monday and Thursday and the day of Arafah so, so it's Friday, Monday and Thursday and the day of Arafah what about the 10 days? last 10 days of? and the first 10 days of? Dhul Hijjah what about the month? Shah Ramadan hey. section if while reciting the reciter becomes stuck and is unable to remember the following verse and desires to ask someone to remind him, it is upon him to do so in a, man, in, in a manner described by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Ibrahim al Nikhay, and Bashir ibn Abi Mas'ud, who stated, Should one of you ask his brother regarding a verse, he should read that which comes before it and then keep quiet without saying anything, and that as, uh, and that, uh, as will show that he is confused. So if a person He's got a recitation wrong, you're praying behind him. Brothers, pay attention to, to, pay attention to this. If a person is in the middle of the prayer, okay? First of all, what you have to understand is that you are in the fifth line. No one wants to hear what you have to say right now. Are you with me? Don't shout from the fifth line. <coughs> yeah? That's not your job. Even if you know it, leave it for the people at the first line. Right at the back, he, he, he shouts. Kolo wa and the Imam hears a little sound coming, he's like, what happened there? No, no, that's not your job. Stay in the fifth line. Who is it that needs to recite? The front. They don't know it, it moves to the second. They don't know it, it moves to the third. They don't know it, it moves to the fourth. What happens is sometimes, four or five people are telling the Imam, the Imam's getting more confused. That's wrong. That's what the first line is for. If you know it, just be quiet. Generally be quiet. Unless you see no one's correcting them. But if you feel like he's doing this because he's just done a mistake and he went by and no one corrected him, the way you deal with it is as follows. Section. Wait, no, 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 before you move to the section. Is that you get the ayah that he read uh, before it. So let's just say, for example, right? Malik Yomidin is before it, right? So let's just say he said, He got it wrong. Or let's just say he jumped, he jumped to Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. So he said, Maliki Yomidin, al Mustaqim. Are you with me, brothers? How do you deal with this situation? The way you deal with this situation is that you just get the ayah that he read. How do you deal with this situation? The way you deal with this situation is that you just grab the verse before it that he got wrong. So you bring him back to Maliki. So he's in, you're in the prayer. So he says, So you go, Maliki Yomidin. You take it back to Maliki Yomidin again. So he will read, read Malik and then he will be forced to read the verse after, right? So when he reads the verse after that, he will know he got something wrong. You alerted him like that. That's how Abdullahi, uh, Ibn Mas'ud, and Ibrahim al Nakhai, and Bashir ibn Abi Mas'ud, and others, they recommended that the person be corrected in that manner. You have to read the whole verse. No, no, no. You can just start the verse for him. Sometimes what you can do, the verse that he got wrong, you can actually start the beginning for him again. You can do that, no problem. But don't tell him the mistake. Because he won't understand why he was the mistake for. If you actually tell him the actual mistake, he won't understand that he got it wrong. He'll think, did I, did I not say that? Are you with me? Section. Huh? Huh? Okay. bil ayatil Qur'aniya. إذا أراد أن يستدل بآية فله أن يقول قال الله تعالى كذا وله أن يقول الله تعالى يقول كذا 
ولا كراهة في شيء من هذا هذا هو الصحيح المختار الذي عليه عمل السلف والخلف وروى ابن أبي داود عن مطرف بن عبد الله بن الشخير التابعي المشهور قال لا تقولوا إن الله تعالى يقول ولكن قولوا إن الله تعالى قال وهذا الذي أنكره مطرف رحمه الله خلاف ما جاء ما جاء به القرآن والسنة وفعلته الصحابة ومن بعدهم رضي الله عنهم فقد قال الله تعالى والله يقول الحق وفي صحيح مسلم عن أبي ذر رضي الله عنه قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الله عز وجل من جاء بالحسنة فله عشر أمثالها وفي صحيح البخاري في تفسير قوله تعالى لن تنالوا البر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون قال أبو طلحة يا رسول الله إن الله تعالى يقول لن تنالوا البر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون فهذا كلام أبي طلحة بحضرة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وفي الصحيح عن مسروق رحمه الله تعالى قال قلت لعائشة رضي الله عنها ألم يقول الله ولقد راه بالأفق المبين ولقد رآه بالأفق المبين فقالت أولم تسمع أن الله تعالى يقول لا تدركه الأبصار وهو يدرك الأبصار أولم تسمع أن الله تعالى يقول وما كان لبشر أن يكلمه الله إلا وحيا أو من وراء حجاب ثم قالت في هذا الحديث والله تعالى يقول يا أيها الرسول بلغ ما أنزل إليك من ربك ثم قالت والله تعالى يقول قل لا يعلم من في السماوات والأرض الغيب إلا الله ونظائر هذا في كلام السلف والخلف أكثر من أن تحصر والله تعالى أعلم Section. If one desires to use a verse as proof for something, it is permissible for him to say, Allah says such and such, or Allah says such and such. This is not considered disliked, and it is correct and chosen, to, and it is the correct and chosen view of the pious predecessors and those who came after them. The author here, rahimahullah, he talks about when you want to use the Quran as evidence, and you want to say Allah said, and you want to use the Quran as evidence. How do you say Allah said? How do you structure your statement? He said, it is permissible for you to say, قال الله تعالى, Allah said, and then you read the verse. And you can also say, Allah تعالى يقول, Allah is saying. So you can make it a past tense, and you can make it a present tense. Sah? And he said, there's no harm in any of them. So you can say, Allah is saying here, and you can also say, Allah said. Both of them, you can say, naam. And he, but he says, وَلَا كَرَاهَةَ فِي شَيْءٍ مِنْ هَذَا None of them is problematic. You can say both ways. هَذَا هُوَ الصَّحِيحُ الْمُخْتَارِ And that is the chosen opinion الذي عليه عمل السلف والخلف. The pious predecessors were upon that and the scholars and the jurists that came after were also upon that. نعم. In contrast to this view, Ibn Dawood narrates that Mutarif Ibn Abdullah Ibn Shaykhir, the renowned Tabi'i, stated, Do not say, Allah the Most High says, rather say, Allah the Most High said. Mutarif's opinion, however, lies contrary to the Quran and the Sunnah and the actions of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mutarif ibn Abdullah is Shikhir, who is a Tabi'i al Jalil. But his father was a companion. Abdullah ibn Shikhir was a companion. He said, لا تقول إن الله تعالى يقول Don't say Allah says. Don't make it a present tense. ولكن قولوا but say إن الله تعالى قال Allah said, past tense. So don't say Allah is saying, but say Allah said. Make it a past tense. And Imam al-Nawawi 
said, وَهَذَا الَّذِي أَنْكَرَهُ مُطَرِّفٌ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ خِلَافُ مَا جَاءَ بِهِ الْقُرْآنِ وَالسُنَّةِ That what Mutarrif ibn al-Shaykh Abdullah ibn al-Shakhir is rejecting. Because he's saying that, don't say this. He said this, his statement of his, actually is in opposition to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And it is also in opposition to the what? The action and the doing of the companions. And those who came after them, may Allah be pleased with them. Because Allah said in the Qur'an, Allah the Most High says in the Qur'an in multiple places, and Allah says the truth and, the, and guides the path in Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah 4. Here Allah is saying what? Wallahu yaqul, yaqul. So Allah used a present tense. Allah used it. Wallahu yaqul al Allah says the truth. So Mutarif's statement is rejected because Allah used it. Naam. In Sahih Muslim, Abu Dar narrates that Abu Dharrin. Abu Dhar, Abi Dhar, Abi Dhar, Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah the Almighty says, in Surah Al-Anam. So who said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? The Prophet saying this. يَقُولُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَ So the Prophet used a present tense. Sah? So we have the Prophet saying it now. So we have the Quran saying it, وَاللَّهُ يَقُولُ الْحَقِّ We have the Prophet saying it. Are you with me brothers? Well, we need the companions now. Now he's going to bring you all three of them saying it. Oh yeah? Allah says in Surah Al-Anam, Ayah 16, Whoever does good will have ten of its kind, meaning his good deed will be multiplied ten times. In Sahih, Sahih uh, Al-Bukhari, it is narrated that Abu Talha asked the Prophet وسلم, regarding a verse in the Qur'an and said, O Messenger of Allah, Allah says. Uh, again, now we have the action of the companion. Who'd, who'd uh, Abi Talha, Al-Ansari radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, Inna Allah ta'ala yaqul, Allah is saying. Are you with me? Sah. And Allah says, you will not attain piety until you spend of what you love. Such was the wording of Abu Talha in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the question I ask you, brothers and sisters, does Allah speak? Yeah? Are you with me? Does Allah speak? Huh? I'm asking you a question, brothers. Does Allah speak? Yeah? Is the Quran his speech? Yeah, it is his speech, right? Was Allah a speaker before he spoke to anyone? Watch that question properly. Everything had a starting point, right? Other than Allah. So, all the creation has a, has a starting has a starting point, right? So, Allah, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak before He created them? Was He a speaker before that? Yeah? He had the ability to do it, but he, wasn't, he, never spoke, he, never, he wasn't a speaker. So the sifa of Allah never has a starting point. Why do you want to say that that characteristic had a starting point? What would happen if you say that? Allah created his own? Allah created his own sifa. Or you'd say Allah is deficient and he became complete. That would entail if you say that. Now, the scholars, they say, just because a person doesn't want to write, doesn't mean they're not a writer. So, just because a person says, I don't want to write, and he even never writes, he doesn't choose to ever write, that doesn't mean he can't write. So, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he always is a speaker. Are you with me? So that's why the sifatul kalam is a very complicated characteristic of Allah. Are you with me, brothers? The reason why it's a complicated characteristics is because it actually takes on two, two types of Allah's characteristics. Are you with me? Which is what? The speech of Allah from one angle is a sifa to that. And the speech of Allah from another angle is a sifa fi'liya. 
Does that make sense? Let me explain both of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's character Allah's characteristics are categorized into what? Two. There are characteristics, Allah's characteristics are divided into two. What are they? Sifat which are called sifat dhatiya. What's sifat dhatiya? It's part of Allah's essence, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning Allah is always hearing, right? Are you with me, brothers? And Allah is always seeing, right? That's called sifat dhatiya. In other words, it never detaches itself from Allah. It never. It never detaches itself, never does it disconnect itself from Allah. And then we have other characteristics which are called sifat. Fi'liya. It's called what? Sifat fi'liya. Sifat fi'liya are basically connected to Allah's will. Sifat fi'liya, which is the second type, is connected to Allah's, Allah's will. What does it mean it's connected to Allah's will? It means Allah does it when He wishes and He leaves it off when He wishes. Like for example, does Allah come down the last third of the night? Are you with me? But is that, is that something He does all the time? No, He doesn't do it all the time. He only does it when He wants to do it. Are you with me, brothers? Does that make sense? That's the difference between Allah's two characteristics. Sifat which are sifat fa'liya and sifat which are? Sifatul kalam enters both of them. It's a sifat da'atiyam bi'atibarin from one angle. And from another angle it is what? Yeah? And from another angle it is what? And from another angle it is sifa fi'liya. So it's sifa da'atiyya bi'atibarin. From, another, from one angle it's sifa fi'liya, uh, sifa da'atiyya. And another angle it is what? Are you with me? The Quran that we have today is the speech of who? It's the speech of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's always with us, right? Will it ever detach itself from us and will it? We'll always have it, right? Allah sifa, this characteristic of his, yatajadad, tajadad, I don't want to use it, I want to say that this characteristic, when Allah talks to a person, it becomes what? Something that happens now. So when Allah spoke to Musa, it's not speaking that he spoke to Nabi Lahi. Ibrahim, for example. So from that angle, it's a fifth sifa fi'liya. From that angle, Allah's speech to Musa when he spoke to him in Turus Sayna is a speech and the speech that he speaks to are you there to Nabi Allah Muhammad or any other prophet is sifa that here from that angle. Can we say some of Allah's speech is better than some of others? Can we give within Allah's speech, can we give virtue to it? Yeah? We can? So you're saying some of Allah's speech is better than the other part? How? So Ayatul Kursi. Ayatul Kursi Fatiha. Are they better? They are better. They are what? They are better than other parts of the Quran. So within the Quran, it's of the, within the Quran, such, such as Tafadul al Quran, and all of these issues, I don't want to go too much into it. I don't want to go too much into, into it. Fact who Allah? That's fairly. Yeah. So the fact that it's specific fairly, do we acknowledge? Okay. What about kalam? Was Allah always one who spoke? So that's why it didn't touch itself from Allah ever. La Allah descending was He does it when He wishes to. No, the, the, that's why I said the kalam is not, we're not looking at it from the angle of the ability. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was always mazala mutakalliman. Allah was always speaking. Whether we know it or not, He was always one who was speaking. Allah always was speaking. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars they mentioned that, because no sifa is naqs. There is a delete for it, there is a niqash of it that uh, Ibn al Qayyim mentions in Muqtasar Sawaiq al Mursala, but I don't want to go into it. Yeah, he does when he wishes to. Yeah? 
Allah's characteristic is sifat fi'li, yeah, Allah does it when he wishes to. Before that, he's not doing it. He never does it. He never done it. He only does it when he wishes to. So, Allah, uh, the does he? So for what? So for instance, his essence, because you mentioned that the fa'liya necessitates that Allah wants to do it at a certain time. Mm-hmm. But except for that, that Allah wants to do it for that all the time, he's only got, does that make sense? So for that, does he always want to do it? Yeah, no, he's, he's not connected to his want. Okay. It's just going to happen. He's always hearing it. A sha'ira believe Allah's characteristics kalam is that here. They believe that. They don't deny that. Are you with me? That's one thing we agree with them on. They just don't agree with Sifat Aliyah. So, for them, speech is part of the Sifat al Sifat Sab'ah, which they affirm. Yeah, but they affirm it as a Sifat Dati and not Sifat Aliyah. They don't believe it comes out of Allah. They are, no, they're saying we're affirming, we're affirming like Allah always hears. Does hearing come out of Allah? Now what the scholars say to them is this Qur'an that we have, how did we get it then? If you're saying that Qur'an, the speech of Allah is sifa dhati, I mean it's something that's in him, then how did it end up that we have this Qur'an today? If the, if the speech doesn't come out of Allah, how did we end up having this Qur'an? So some of them said, is this word is Jibreel. Some of them said, is the word of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Yeah, so this is this is Qadir to Tanawwur, one of those who Allah is speaking to. And it's, it's an unnecessary thing to go into right now. But it would be nice to, to tackle it in Aqid Tahawi or something like that, if we do it. It's like the Sifatul Khalq, Allah creating subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sifatul Khalq is also Sifat Dhatiya and Sifat Fi'liya. Are you with me? It's both. Khalq, creating, is a Sifat Fi'liya and a Sifat Dhatiya. As a now. The creating is was always there. Now, <coughs> it is also authentically narrated that Masroor, may Allah have mercy on him, said, "I said to Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, that did Allah Almighty, the Almighty, not say?" He has indeed seen him in the clear horizon. She replied to him saying, Did you not hear Allah say the Almighty? Eyes cannot reach him, but he reaches eyes. And did you not hear that Allah the Most High says, It is not given to any human being that Allah should speak to him unless it be by revelation, from behind the veil, or he sends a messenger to reveal what he wills and by his will. He is the Most High, most Here there's an issue is, um, I know that it's nothing to do with this topic at hand right now, but Aisha radiallahu anha, all she said to him, she was trying to show him is, Anna Allah ta'ala yaqulu. Aisha was saying this, yaqulu. That's what no we want from it, all. But there's a mas'ala that needs to be spoken about, which is the issue of, did the prophecy Allah? Did he? Yeah? So did the Prophet sallallahu see Allah in, with his eyes? Where did he see it with? He saw Allah in a dream. The Prophet said, who did he see in a dream? Did he see Allah in a dream? The Prophet saw Allah in a dream. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Shocking for you, huh? Yeah, he said, Ra'itu Rabbi, I saw my Lord in a dream. Are you there? Alayhi salatu wasalam. But he never saw with his eyes. Are you with me? This particular hadith of Allah being seen, or the Prophet saying, saying, I saw my Lord in a dream. This, Ibn Rajab wrote a whole book on it. Yeah? It's the famous hadith, Ikhtisab al Mala'il A'la. It's called the dispute of the what? Now, what's the book called in English? It's the dispute of the angels. What's it called? It's in English, it's translated in English. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's that book. 
It's a small little risala. He wrote, he writes. It's got a lot of information in there for you to see. Alakulihal, the Messenger Ali Salatusalam never saw his Lord with his eyes. He didn't. Not with his bare eyes, like that. Even the night of Isra and Mi'raj, they asked him, also, did you see your Lord? He said, Adna Rahu. How can I see him? He said, I saw light, light. This is khalas, nur. Is that the difference between the Aleph 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 the the Aleph the the Aleph the the so Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, La tu dirikhu al-absar. Eyes cannot see fully Allah. Are you with me? Wa huwa yudrikhu al-absar. So anyways, no one saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Has anyone ever seen Allah? No one has. But may Allah not prevent us from seeing him the day of judgment. There is no blessing greater than that. That is the best blessing, ya ikhwah. Greater than even entering Jannah. The one who says Allah won't be seen the day of judgment, the Mu'tazila and the misguided people. If, if you're doing hirman of yourself now and you're, not let, you're, you're preventing yourself from it and saying Allah can't be seen, then of course you're not going to see him the day of judgment. You've been prevented from it. You prevented yourself from it. Sah, a'udhu billah. The best blessing, shaitan came to you and fooled you in believing that you're not going to see Allah. And you made it one of your beliefs. So the way we believe that Allah can be seen in this world, that Allah honor us the day of judgment for allowing us to see the creator that we were worshipping. But the ayah Aisha used, which is, and I want to ask you this question. Here the ayah says, here Allah says, that the day of judgment, the people will see Allah. True or false? Allah tells us that he will be seen the day of judgment. And the ayah that Aisha read, can you read, read, read the English translation, what does it say? It is not given to any human being that Allah No, the before that? Eyes cannot reach him, but he reaches eyes. Wallahi, you know these translations are very slick. Wallahi, they're very tricky. Look what he just translated as. Repeat it one more time. Eyes cannot reach him, but he reaches eyes. Nah. La tudriku means eyes don't encompass him. Are you with me, brothers? That's what it means. Idraq means when you encompass something, fully comprehended, fully. Are you with me? But people, the reason is because the person translated has an ash'ari tendency in them. So they will negate Allah being seen, so they all affect their translation. Are you with me, brothers? Even a sunnah.com that you guys use has those, they have ash'ari tendencies in those who are translating. Hadith al-Sifat, you see them, sometimes they go out. They have to be very, very careful, Allah. You have to be very, very careful. Anyways, la tudriku al-absar means Aisha negated something. So if this ayah says, if this ayah says Allah can't be fully encompassed in sight, that doesn't negate the ayahs that say Allah will be seen. Because even those who see Allah won't be able to fully comprehend Allah. Will they? No, they will. Idraq of Allah is weakness That's, that we have. We won't be able to do that. We won't be able to fully see Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Also in this hadith, she stated, and Allah the Most High says, O Messenger, convey that which is your to you from your Lord. Then she says, Allah the Almighty says, Say, none in the heavens and the earth knows the unseen except Allah. Statements such as these from the pious predecessors and those who came after them are innumerable, and Allah knows best. Let's take 10-15 minutes break, inshallah. Literally 10-15 minutes.